Okay, we're back live inside theCUBE. This is SiliconAngle.tv, SiliconAngle.com's coverage of IBM Edge 2012. We're in Orlando, Florida. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante at Wikibon.org, and we're here with Ron Reif, who is the business line manager for the IBM software division. Uh, Ron, welcome to theCUBE. Oh, thank you. So we're talking off, off camera. Um, your involvement in, you actually sit inside the Tivoli organization. That's you right. work very extensively with the STG, the server group, uh, and presumably the storage group as well. That's right, I mean, I, IBM Storage is, um, is a business that has both hardware and software in it. We're in different divisions inside IBM, but externally we, you know, we're IBM Storage. It's all internal plumbing, right? All internal plumbing. But it does plumbing. matter, right? I mean, it does matter because you know, if organizationally, sometimes if the organizational is, the organization is aligned correctly, you can get more stuff done, but you guys seem to be sort of reaching that equilibrium state of, of, of between hardware and software. Yeah, it's a very, um, in, internally, it's a very uh, close partnership. I've personally been back and forth between the divisions two or three times. Um, I'm just, uh, I'm an IBM storage person. By, by trade? By trade. Um, I was a customer long before I was uh, an IBMer, now I'm an IBMer. Storage software has been my life. So, from a practitioner's perspective, um, what are people asking you for these days? Uh, you know, one of the, I think the biggest challenge that um, we've talked about here at, at Edge has been this explosive data growth. I mean, people have talked about it as a data avalanche, a data explosion, a data you know tidal wave. We keep seeing tremendous growth in storage, um, and it's really not a whole lot different than what we saw. Oh, I don't know, five six years ago with servers. Um, servers were completely out of control, and folks, um, if you're here at Edge, you're probably using a a server hypervisor nowadays to manage your server environment. Virtualization has taken over. Uh, same thing's happening in, in storage environments too. Just as we took physical server assets, we consolidated those down into much more modular, much more centralized server footprints, if you will, and then we virtualized everything to um, improve utilization, to speed up provisioning, to um, uh, create mobility of our virtual uh, physical or, or virtual server environments. We're doing exactly the same thing in storage. Um, storage hypervisors are sort of now the conversation that I'm having with a lot of clients. Um, with servers taken care of through virtualization, the new fastest growing piece of the CIO's budget is storage. And, um, and so we're looking at a lot of the same techniques, consolidation of storage resources into much more centralized, modular, physical storage, and then virtualization of everything. One of the announcements that we're making here this week is the Smart Cloud Virtual Storage Center, which is IBM's storage hypervisor, if you will, for those environments. Okay, so uh, we had Mike Sylvia on before. He's a mm -hmm. practitioner inside of IBM's, you know, right. the CIO group. and. Um, he was basically describing the environment. It sounds like a very well-run organization. Now, of course, he's all blue. Oh, right? of course. Now, not all your clients are all blue, so there's a heterogeneous world out there. Is that what the sort of storage hypervisor vision is designed to do, is to incorporate these, some of these heterogeneous, heterogeneous assets? That's exactly right. You know, what Mike, what Mike does, at IBM CIO office, um, they use the virtual storage center but they do it on IBM physical hardware, uh, of course, you know, we're IBM. Um, but the virtual storage center, like any uh, store, or like any yeah, I, I, Sorry to interrupt, but it, John, yeah. at IBM, it, you, you get fired for not using IBM. <laughs> <laughs> right, we were joking before, nobody ever gets fired for coming on the Cube, nobody ever gets fired for for. It's actually kind of cool IBM. to be on a Cube. I've, yeah. I've watched the Cube, <laughs> never been in the Cube, so far so good. Yeah, yeah, uh, sorry. Well, we, 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 we the tough questions, get the easy ones out of the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 butter me up. The, uh, the virtual storage center is designed to work regardless of your hardware choice. So, you know, it operates on anybody's physical hardware and can migrate data, you know, improve utilization. Um, as we talked about earlier this morning, um, you can compress data regardless of the physical hardware that you choose. You have mobility. I can move data from one tier, from one vendor to another. Um, regardless of, of your hardware choice. It makes it available to every single client that we talk to. Every CIO can take advantage of a storage hypervisor of the Smart Cloud Virtual Storage Center. 
Is that a mindset, mind shift in, within IBM over the last 10 years? I mean, it, you know, the old IBM, right, would, would not want to sell software to manage other people's hardware, you know? They would really want to push IBM hardware. Did, at some point, did you come to the realization that, wow, there's great margins in software, or these are problems that customers have that if we can solve, we can make a lot of money? Did, can you go back a little bit and share with us that epiphany that you it, guys had? It is a, you know, it is a difficult kind of a conversation, but, you know, it's a reality. I mean, what's happening, what happened in the server environment, servers today, when you talk about compute infrastructures, it's very much a software conversation. You have physical hardware, that the actual engines that provide the MIPS, right? But when you talk about servers to any client today, it's a, it's a virtual server. It's a software conversation. Same thing's happening in storage. Um, a lot of the value in whether it's an IBM um, system, a fully integrated system, or in the virtual storage center, it's all in the software layer. The, the underlying hardware, it's improving. Um, it's there for performance. It's there for reliability, availability. But all the capability is in the software layer. Um, and we chose to invest in a software layer uh, probably back 2003, about 10 years now, um, invest in a software layer that was portable, would work across anyone's hardware infrastructure. We've been advancing that to the point where it is today with the Smart Cloud Virtual Storage Center. Ron, I, I got to ask you about the manageability because that comes up a lot about man, the management software. It's been around for a while. And, you know, manageability is always a cost and the labor issues going on with big data, new skill sets are coming in. Right. How has the management equation changed on the software side given how storage is evolving? You mentioned virtualization, the whole new mindset. What, what's going on with manageability on the software side? Uh, I think there's, there's really two things. Um, one of them is from a traditional administrator's perspective. You want it to be easy. You want to be able to figure out what, how, do I, how do I get to what I want to do quickly. Um, and one of the investments that we've been making is taking a, an acquisition we actually did several years ago, XIB, um, had an award-winning, super easy to use administrative interface. And we've been taking that interface and moving it across our storage systems portfolio. Um, here this week at Edge, we're announcing that we're putting that same user interface in our Tivoli Storage Productivity Center, which is a, the management um, console for storage. And so administrators working across any kind of IBM storage, able to take that administrative interface and just you know, very quickly do what they need to do. We're also integrating that same management interface into our Smart Cloud Virtual Storage Center. So that now, whether you're IBM hardware or anybody else's hardware, you're able to get that same simplicity of management, a common way of doing things, regardless of your hardware. Yeah, so multi-vendor is big. Complete multi -vendor. Death of the command line interface? Uh, yes, <laughs> death of the command line interface. Here, here. I'll tell you the one other interesting point about manageability, though, is this cloud idea, it's shifting who does the management, right? Organizationally. Well, explain, explain that, it's a good concept. Yeah, so, so used to, um, I'm an application owner, I need some storage. I make a call or enter a ticket, it goes to the storage guy. The storage guy sits down at his console and he provisions the storage, sets up the network, etc. That's a little bit slow for in the cloud environment. Um, so with cloud, um, what you have are orchestrators or portals or whatever that are more, much more self-service. They're reacting in real time. Um, so what we've done with our Smart Cloud Virtual Storage Center is we've put a cloud services API on top. Um, a RESTful API that portals or orchestrators can get at and they can ask for storage to be provisioned out of you know, a catalog of available services, again, regardless of your hardware choice. Uh, and it's done automatically and the, the, the role of the storage administrator changes from being the guy who's punching the buttons to someone who simply defines the list of available services in a catalog and the orchestrators or the, or the portals are the ones that do more self-service, real-time, high-velocity provisioning of the new storage. So people in, in always complain about managers of managers and managers of managers of managers, okay. right? At the same time, um, those sub-managers have certain functions that are valuable. So can you um, uh, appeal to both ends of that spectrum? with a single, you know, people talk about the single pane of glass, mm -hmm. um, and it's like the paperless office. Um, so, 
Can we achieve that? And is that really your fundamental strategy? It, it is for storage. And, and really, you think about something like the virtual storage center, it's the hypervisor for storage. So it's the storage resource manager, the subject matter expert. He's going to be right alongside the server hypervisor, um, VMware, IBM Power VM, and they're going to be covered by a, um, a larger orchestrator, IBM Smart Cloud provisioning, IBM Smart Cloud orchestration, that's going to drive down provisioning compute resources, network resources, storage resources. They'll be asking those subject matter experts, if you will, um, to do their job. Okay, so now VMware wants to own that. Microsoft wants to own that, so why do you win? Well, VMware, Microsoft, they're, they're focused, they start with and focus on the server resource. And then they sort of dabble off into maybe the compute or, or the, the storage or networks that have already been handed to them. What we're doing is creating the, the complete end-to-end -end storage hypervisor to take care of all storage resources whether they're used by VMware on x86, uh, or Microsoft on x86, or you know, KVM on x86, or whether they're used by uh, PowerVM. Regardless of your hypervisor, server hypervisor, the storage hypervisor will provide services to all of them, um, and then orchestrators on Okay, top. so that's what customers want. You're going to do, your, your contention is you're going to do a better job of managing those heterogeneous assets than, say, I'll just pick on VMware. Sure. Because they're going to want to push. From a storage stuff. perspective, that's absolutely true. Yeah, even though obviously they do uh, have a lot of storage partners, but they're, they're not doing, your, your argument is, and I would agree by the way, they're not doing a great job of managing heterogeneous assets. That's not their intent, that's not no. their strategy. They, they provide interfaces, mm -hmm. and we provide interfaces. They'll talk to each other, so the server hypervisors can talk with the storage hypervisors and take care of the entire virtual data center. We had um, the VP of data on, uh, the, the, the queen or the, late, the big data lady, you know, as she called us, you know, she said, you know. <laughs> it, um, she said um, data mobility is huge with, with retention, data retention, huge challenge. But then uh, we also talked to Ed Walsh about um, you know, the four horsemen, one of them is mobility, right? So with mobility right. you have huge latency, you have real time, all the cool things that people want, real time analytics, real time data to the edge, the phone. What's going on with data mobility is, uh, in terms of the software side? Is that yeah, so let me maybe uh, talk about mobility in a, a practical use case, um, for example. Since we're talking about server hypervisors and storage hypervisors, one of the things that the virtual storage center that we're announcing here does is allows you to have um, a virtual storage infrastructure that spans physical sites. So I can have a site on the on the west on the east coast of the United States and another one two or three hundred kilometers inland, for example. Uh, if I notice uh, hurricanes coming up the up the coast, yeah. I know my data center on the coast is in danger. I can through mobility uh, ask the storage to move all the data transparently while the applications are online inland yeah. two or three hundred miles. At the same time, coupling with the, the uh, server hypervisor, I can use server mobility to move all the applications inland, virtual machines inland a couple hundred miles. So the entire data center up and moves. Okay, wait, so that's, that sounds good if I'm moving a, you know, half a gigabyte. Well, what if I'm trying to move large volumes? I mean, does it take longer than backing up my laptop, for instance? So is that really a practical and feasible um, uh, uh, solution or have you somehow come up with a way to solve the speed of light problem? Uh, well, it's actually not, uh, you know, I, I said moving, mobility, but yeah. what's happening is both of these data centers are, are being kept in yeah. sync, active, active. Yeah. In fact, we just had a, one of our customers um, who was managing all the uh, chambers of commerce in Germany doing the same sort of thing. So the data resides in both places. Data it's resides the small changes that are being That moved. are being um, moved side to side, and there's a single virtual instance of that data that everybody sees, even though there's two physical... So data at a distance, essentially. Data at a distance. Yeah, uh, yeah. and that's obviously mobility there, but then it's also actually mobility, mobility, which is the, fun, the, the smart Moving phones. it out to the phone. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a piece of, um, a, you know, piece of the portfolio I don't deal Touch. in all the way out to the telephone. Yeah, thing. yeah, so that'll be both flash guys and dealing with low latency stuff, data retention, cool. 
Um, I don't have any other questions. <laughs> I think we're out of time anyway, John. Uh, Ron, thank you very much for coming inside the Cube. Tivoli, great story. Um, Frank Moss, guy I used to know back in the day. Yeah. You know, it was a great acquisition from IBM, one of, the, one of your better ones, and it's really panned out. And I think IBM's you know, clearly a leader in that in that space. So Good. congratulations. And thank you much. Thanks very much for your perspective. I enjoyed job. it. Nice job. All right. Okay, we'll be right back with SiliconANGLE.TV's coverage. We want to thank IBM for making it possible to come here to, to allow us to do our independent uh, cube analysis and commentary. So watch the IBM ads. You're going to see IBM ads all today and tomorrow. Um, and on SiliconANGLE.TV, so support IBM uh, and you're supporting us. So we'll be right back with our next guest.